Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to another episode of Deer Creek. We've jumped straight into carry on from where we finished off in the live stream, planting barley here in field number one. Now we're about a third of the way over, probably closer to halfway. See on the map how far we have got, and uh, we're making pretty good progress now that we're all set up. And as you'll see on the back there, and if you were lucky enough to catch it in the live stream, Ward Agricultural Solutions have shared with us a copy of their upcoming anhydrous caddy there on the back so uh, we're making use of the anhydrous which is built into this map the uh, beta stat seed hawk there which is also anhydrous ready and uh, another board agricultural solutions mod you can actually get this at the moment from the itch.io so go and check that out the anhydrous caddy though is still a work in progress and still a wee way away from being released not too far though so do keep an eye out on the social channels for updates on that but uh, it's very nice to be able to be in here and testing this out, seeing how it all works. And so far, it's running flawlessly. So, apart from the size of the field, we're, uh, we're cranking along pretty well. Now, plan for today. I do want to get this finished off and uh, not spend too much time in here. So we're going to get this done as quickly as possible. I would have put it on a worker and uh, used that. But I think with the angle we're running at, I might have spent a lot of time trying to tidy up some... Uh, little wedges we would have ended up with so I've made the decision we will carry on we'll get this done and uh, then once we've all finished planting we will be moving into harvesting the sorghum field which you can just see on the other side of the road there behind us so uh, the sorghum is all ready to go we did have in the live stream also we had some tillage running over on field 9 that is all finished so uh, that field is now just going to sit there ready to be planted in spring so well, I guess without further ado, we are just going to carry on here. Uh, we are going to have to sort out the truck and run and grab some more anhydrous from the co-op. We are down to about 20%. Using it reasonably quickly, but uh, not too fast. We get half a dozen passes off a anhydrous tank here. And this one is about 20,000 litres, I think. Uh, so we will get a whole lot more than that out of one of the tanks on the truck. So we'll go and pick some of that up and be all good to carry on planting. So... Let's get into it. So we've made it back up here, 4% left there in the anhydrous tank. So I think, we're down to 3 now, we'll park up here and uh, we will go and get some more anhydrous in the truck and make sure we can get this all filled up and ready to carry on going. There we are, we are in the Mac with the tanker on the back now. I do know for realism this would not be how you would go and purchase anhydrous ammonia. Normally it would be delivered to you on site uh, and would probably be filled up into the uh, into the caddy somewhere other than in the field and in fact if I've seen it done previously uh, they might have two or three caddies lined up at the end of the field evenly spaced across for about where you're going to use it up and you just disconnect one and hook up another but uh, for today we are just going to go with the tanky here we know we can load it up and get the anhydrous we need back down to the field and uh, carry on with our planting We'll just get pulled in here in front of the anhydrous tank. Alright, good there, we can get hooked up and start filling it. There we go, 32,000 litres of anhydrous in the tank. So, let's get back down to the field and we'll get the uh, caddy filled up and we'll get moving again. Being a little bit naughty, we've just driven in here on to the field, I think. We can uh, actually overload directly into the tank without actually having to go and hop into the tractor, which is uh, nice and handy. We'll get 20,000 litres or so into the uh, into the caddy there, and we'll park the truck up on the edge of the field. Make it a little bit easier because I think we're going to have to go and top it up again. We go 13,000 litres left, so must have taken about 19 out of there. We can just get turned around here, make sure we don't put our nose out where the car is. We'll park up here on the grass and. Uh, Come and top up again when we need to. There we go, 18,900 or so litres. Now that'll transfer, translate to about 5,000 gallons, I think, which is the uh, imperial capacity of the caddy, which I think uh, reflects the name of it, the HAC 5000. Well, I think now that we're all back underway, we've got a decent amount of anhydrous. Our seed tank is rather full. I think there's nothing better than to throw on a little bit of a time lapse and uh, we will chew through getting the rest of this barley planted.
things are going pretty well. We've got uh, just this little bit left in here to do. I think we're going to have enough anhydrous in the caddy. We're going to have to go top that up again. Uh, but I am very close to making the fatal mistake of running the tractor out of fuel. Uh, just looking at the diesel gauge there. I think it might be on the last line. Uh, I've got some dashboard open and one of the screens is telling me I only have 1% left. So we're going to hopefully get to the end of this pass. Then we're going to go park up over by the truck, put some more in hydrogen, and then we're going to have to shoot down to the yard, pick up the fuel trailer and come back down to put some diesel on this. Or not, because uh, we've just run out of diesel. So close to the end of the row. Alright, well, looks like we're going to be stranded here for a minute while we uh, go and grab the uh, fuel trailer. And we're going to have to come back and get this primed and ready to go again. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. We'll have to uh, see if we can bleed some diesel into the system somehow. But anyhow, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the operator's manual will give me instructions on what to do. But we'll head down to the shed and we'll be back soon. Alright, we're hooked up here to Thunder. And we should be able to park here. I'm hoping we we'll get some diesel into it. There we go. Starting to fill up there. So I'm not quite sure how much we're going to need to get the tractor going again. We'll, uh, we'll put a decent amount in here though because we can obviously use it later as well. Alright, we've got just under 2,000 litres, which should be enough. Almost uh, half full. So actually, we are over half full. So we'll just pop out this way, we'll run down the road and get down to where the tractor's parked. We've got over here with the trailer, we're just uh, in the tractor. It looks like we are filling up there. I can see the diesel level is going up, so that's good. We'll uh, just have to spend a few minutes, like I said, making sure everything is working, that we haven't gone and wrecked anything with uh, running it out of diesel there. But uh, that's good, we'll get this all filled up, get the truck out of the way, and uh, we should be able to get going again very soon. All fueled up, we've reprimed the engine, got some diesel where it needs to be, so we should be able to get it cranking again. There we go, that was uh, very fortunate. Right, get this turn back on, we'll get down to the end of the row, and uh, we will probably go and get a little bit more anhydrous, I think. Might as well go and top the caddy up here while we're at this end of the row. I'm pretty sure that that 38% won't be enough to cover that last little section in there. But a full caddy probably will just about be the right amount. And then we go full of anhydrous and back underway. So we'll get this last little piece knocked out and then it'll be time to head back up to the yard. Pull the combines out of the shed and head on over and get that sorghum field started. Heading down the very last little part of the field. Feels good to be getting this finished. It's taken me a little bit longer to do than I thought it might have from where we started out today. Uh, but not to worry, we're there at the end. So now that we've done this, it's going to be time to get it all folded up, head back over to the yard, figure out where we're going to park this. Uh, not quite sure where we're going to put this big piece of equipment. Might have to leave it outside for now, and then figure something out a little bit later. But there we go, all done. Right, let's get that turned off. We'll get the uh, toolbar folded up, and head on our way back over to the yard. We have to recover the uh, anhydrous tanker as well, get that back there too. We've just parked up over there with the air cart, I think that's probably the best place to leave it at the moment. We're going to have to get the auger trailer there, the uh, conveyor, we'll get that put away as well. But firstly, today we need to go and get started on the combining. So in here, we've got our combines and headers auger wagon so we need to get all this taken out i'm going to get one combine over running first i think we're going to have to get the auger wagon there pulled out of the way so we can get the head pulled out of the way as well uh, a little bit of shuffling around to do so we'll grab the pickup we'll go and grab the 8rt to run on the grain cart and we'll get go and at least get one of the combines set up and started before we come back and get the second one We've got the 790 out there, we've got the header here behind the pickup, so we're just going to get this over to the field, get it in a position where we can hook onto it, and then we'll come back and grab the combine, get them up and running once they're going, we'll get the crank cart set up next, we're going to try and run that on some auto drive, and uh, then once we've got all that sorted out, we will be able to come and get the a second combine going. The car coming from our right, oh, yeah. fair amount of traffic today. Mindful of the fact we've got this big heater on, don't want to pull out and have that hit. 
So the main field entrance is just up on the other side of this property here on our right. I was scouting it out when we were uh, planting and driving past and I think if we just pull in here there's probably enough space in under the trees to be able to park the header trailer and hopefully get the combine hooked up there without being too far onto the road but uh, there certainly is not a huge amount of space we have to try and see if we can manoeuvre it back it up in here without causing an issue with the traffic might be a little bit tricky Alright that should uh, just about do I think we should be able to get in here and hook it up without uh, catching too much of the field so we'll, uh, we'll head back over and grab the combine in fact we can take the pick up because uh, we'll need to bring the other header back over too only just enough room for us to run along here traffic coming the other way we've probably got quite a line of cars get up behind us so we'll just get pulled in here let them go past before we worry about trying to get this header connected it will go right just enough space to be able to squeeze in here be able to pull in there we go all right just quickly back out while there's no traffic coming down and uh, make a move in here there we go we're underway it's all going going into the combine now i'm going to cut this section here out i think it might just help with getting access in getting the grain cart and things like that set up getting the next combine down here as well we've got this little part of the field here all cleared out now it won't help with course play course play will still scan the entire way across the uh, field boundaries but at least we uh, at least we won't have to worry about damaging any crop and uh, trying to make a tight maneuver like we did to get this combine up and running now that we've got that section cleaned out, I'm going to go and set up some course play course and get things running properly. Right, there's our course all set up and we should be good to go. So we'll leave them running. And by the time they've uh, got to a full state, we should be able to get the course, uh, the grain cart up and running. So that's our next job. And then it will be the second of the combines. Although well, this field isn't actually this big, uh, that big. The two combines will just get us done a little bit faster in here. No point having them sitting in the shed, we might as well make use of them. So we've got the grain cart running on auto drive. You can see the combine there with the auger out already. We've set a pre-call level at the moment of 40% for the combine. Uh, let's have a look in the hopper there. Nowhere near full. You can probably turn that down a little bit. 40% on this sort of crop is probably a little bit too low. But uh, it was worth experimenting with. So we'll, we'll keep on fiddling around with that. But uh, we might just let these guys run and try and get this field opened up. Uh, we've only able to do two headland passes with the combine because of the narrow little sections up the front against the road. Uh, we couldn't get three headlands to work in there. So two headlands it is. And then we'll be running the land mode so we can get the second combine in here running as well. Uh, and that'll be when it becomes a little bit more important probably for the pre-call level to work. So uh, we'll let this carry on and... Go and grab the other combine and at least have it over here so they're ready to start when the second headland's underway. We've just caught up back with the combine as they are about to cut into the field and make some space so they can unload here on the headland pass. They've made it most of the way around the field actually. We're just about to back up the front. We'll just find one of the houses here. They're just going to cut in here. The grain cart was very smart. It actually waited back there for them to be able to do this. Uh, and interestingly enough, unlike if there's 19, they've actually only cut in part way, not, uh, not a full width. Just wait here for a second and see if the grain cart can make its way over here to the auger. And here they come already moving. They were going to drive through the crop there, but they've done a decent job to avoid driving across that. So we'll just wait and see if they can get up here beside us and get the combine unloaded. There we go. Of course they can. A <laughs> little bit, little bit behind. Uh, I wonder if I can change that in auto drive. There we go. Combine's back underway. We just had a little bit of a problem with the Kida crashing into the tractor. Uh, seems to be a bit of an issue when you've cut in there and the grain cart doesn't get backed up out of the way. So just need to fiddle with that a little bit. Uh, I couldn't find a setting in the tractor to adjust the pipe position in relation to the grain cart so uh, that might just be something we have to persevere with and uh, hopefully there might be some updates that come out for either auto drive or horseplay which might rectify that 
But there we go, we're uh, just going to go through here and we'll be just about all the way around the field. Uh, not too long. But we need to go and get the truck over here as well because uh, there's nothing to empty the grain cart into without having a truck over in the field. So I think we've got everything all set up over here now. We've got the second combine running there. You can see in the background has started on some of the lands. We're just finishing the second headland pass here. Of two, of course. Grain cart running along the side quite nicely, actually. Just about get us empty combine down to about zero there so hopefully the grain cart will now just uh, pause and jump out of the way we have got the truck set up over in the distance as well you might just be able to see above the uh, hopper there if I scroll down like this you can just see the truck moving uh, getting into position hopefully ready to be loaded with uh, some sorghum when the grain cart needs to so uh, we're just going to hang out here for a little bit, make sure everything's running smoothly. And once we're confident it is, we'll put together a little bit of a montage of it all working like clockwork, I hope. But at least from a combine perspective, everything seems to be going exactly as I'd hoped. We'll uh, finish the headland pass and this combine will go and start up on the hands over from the left hand side of the field. We've kind of picked the middle one here for the uh, second combine. Uh, certainly with these big 50 foot headers making short work of the field not going to take uh, too long at all when you can see that swath I've managed to open through the middle there I just noticed the augers popped out there on the second combine so you'll be able to see the grain cart start to move and there they go they are moving over in the back there so they should get around and hopefully go and get that combine unloaded we're at 21% here in this one so uh, it shouldn't take too long to get a decent amount in here and also need an unload and just as we come around the corner you can see the truck there as well so everything seems to be uh, running pretty smoothly the test will be getting the grain into the uh, into the truck because uh, that could could be the tricky little part we will wait and see the grain cart's made it here to combine number two and uh, one thing I do like about this is I'm not getting any course play warnings about a uh, vehicle being too close or any of those uh, unsightly little boxes that would pop up on the screen in 19 so fingers crossed we may have seen the end of those uh, either that or they're still trying to figure out the way to make it look as bad as possible for us uh, but there we go that is all working nicely there running pretty smoothly and uh, we'll go and check on the grain cart here when it goes and empties into the truck the moment of truth grain cart has hit the threshold of 85 percent that i'd set for it to uh, unload at so we're heading over here now i'm actually just going to bring up while we're doing this there we go it's opened up just thought i'd show you the two courses we've got here so we are in the uh left hand side cart unload pull up here and do a u-turn hopefully not too fast and jackknife and turn around to run past the truck and hopefully we're going to plan unloading into it now I did this without the truck in place so quite sure if we're going to be close enough I mean, tight thing in fact I think we are going to be be able to get over the bin there and we're unloading perfect not quite as neat and tidy as I'd normally like it to be I normally like to have a bit more of a straighter run so in fact, if the truck weight point was just back a uh, point or two, it probably would have worked a little bit better. There we go, we've got uh, the front hopper full. We'll just get the back one full and the truck should then drive off and get on down to the uh, to the farm. And in fact, we might go and jump into the truck while it does that. There we go, just in time. I was having a few issues with the course running out of here with it trying to turn and getting caught up on that power pole so I'm my fingers and toes are crossed that we're going to get turned out here not quite I've adjusted it about three times and I haven't quite got it right yet uh, just have to pause that right press go again I'll make some minor adjustments on that again very soon but let's run with the truck down to the yard and make sure everything unloads in this silo we're just pulling into the yard here and make sure we get turned into the entrance it's actually quite tight when i was trying to record this one this trailer and uh, truck combo we should turn in here over the auger pit we're getting a trigger because we've taken the cover off 
Let's just see if we can get both the hoppers here unloaded. Gently rolls in and over, doesn't want to overshoot the trigger. We end up picking it up right on the very edge of the trigger. There you go, as I suspected, right on the very edge. But uh, not to worry, it's working, which is the key thing. And the sick one, excellent. Right, three and a half thousand dollars worth of wages have gone. Horse plan auto drive are uh, greedy. But uh, I'm pleased to see that, so we've managed to get that auto drive all set up and working perfectly. So we'll head back over to the field and uh, I think we'll start to get a little bit of a montage put together. Finally wrapping up the last pass here in the Sorghum field, the other combine had finished their land a uh, wee while ago and it left us just here with the X9 running on this one over here. Now for some reason course plate didn't work quite how I expected it to, we ended up doing those middle lands with the auger on the wrong side, not sure whether that was a user error uh, or something I did or whether it was something course plate did, so we'll have to take a look at that in the future and try and avoid that from happening because that certainly impacted on things. And there was a few occasions where the grain cart just got a little bit uh, a little bit stuck and didn't want to unload, particularly with the other combine, not so much with the X9, but wouldn't unload on the go. It would only take a small amount out of the combine before uh, driving off, so still, obviously we're in the infancy of uh, course plan auto drive in FS22, so still learning some things, but you can see the grain cart's racing across the field towards us, so for the most part it's worked pretty well and I'm pretty impressed to have this, uh, this early in the game. We'll just run down the end here, get this all finished off. We've had three truckloads have gone into the silo as well, so we're going to have a decent amount of sorghum to sell when the price is uh, at its peak. Not for a wee while yet though. 
So we'll let them finish off, get this last little piece done and uh, everything packed up and back over to the yard. The well, last of the grain here going into the truck. Managed to get it all in, which is perfect. So we can uh, not open the cover, we can close that off. And uh, actually the truck must just about be full because it's taken off on its own, which is uh, good to see. Combines, the headers and the pickup are all on their way back to the yard or should be back there by the time we do. So uh, we'll see you back there to do one last tidy up before uh, we wrap things up. We've got everything back here to the yard and it's looking like we've got a fair amount of cleaning to do. These uh, combines and everything has got pretty filthy considering they only ran in that one field. So I think that is a perfect time to wrap things up. We'll go and get the pressure washer out, we'll give them a clean off and get them put away in the shed. And next time we are back we'll uh, have something else to take care of. Now just before we do go, 175,000 litres of sorghum there in the bin. So uh, you can see we've got it going in and we've got it coming out so one to one uh, should be pretty good when the price is at its highest towards the end of winter January February seem to be the uh, months to sell sorghum so we'll just have to hold on until then so as always I do hope you have enjoyed that episode thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one